గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఎస్ టుడే వీ టౌట్ అబౌట్ హౌ ది వర్డ్ ఫోర్ మైండ్ఫుల్నెస్ ఇస్ బీన్ డిరైవ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద సంస్కృత లాంగ్వేజ్ and how it has been <coughs> gradually innovated or changed or tailored to suit in the present day the system of life long meditation can be uh, um packaged into a short term courses all this we have discussed then what exactly the meditation means how many different kind of uh, meditative processes are exist and uh, how anyone can use these systems suitable for one's own daily life and finally <coughs> we talked about <coughs> if someone wish to uh, begin the four mindfulness meditation in a very simple way in one's daily life how it should begin and then <coughs> i discussed about uh, the intention because anything to do in the right way the motivation intention then actual action and then after the completion of the action how to um, dedicate the merits or demerits so these three things are always important to make anything a kind of holistic or wholeness therefore to examine the intention to do anything is very important in the buddhist perception the action by its own nature cannot classify positive or negative but the action all actions are classified by the motivation and the intention by which the act is performed so therefore for a meditative effort we need a clear determined motivation is necessary without a clear and a determined motivation some one may begin to meditate just for sake of fun or just to experiment that will have not much value or it may not give any result so as i mentioned yesterday the motivation can be 
Number one, immediate secular objectives, worldly objectives. And number two, for spiritual practice, a spiritual journey. If this motivation is only for immediate purposes such as uh, health or free from disease or increase of uh, efficiency in one's work, then the process and that the practice will also little different. In that case also, the intention should not be a negative one. <coughs> to compete with someone else or to put defeat someone else or to increase one's own ability or capacity in order to harm someone else or overpower someone else. These are not uh, appropriate intention or motivation. With such motivation, anyone may do a kind of meditation because all these meditative systems are basically belonging to spiritual path. For example, a just physical exercise program that doesn't belong to a spiritual journey and these things can begin with any kind of motivation. But for a system which is belonging to a spiritual path that may be used for worldly benefits but that should not be um, indulged into violence or harm to any other. In that case, the process, the effort, the time, whatever you may spend to these things are just waste. It will not give any result. So this may also one should keep in the mind. Then it is for a <coughs> spiritual purpose, then of course the spirituality must belong into any of traditional faith system. Christianity, Vedic, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, or any one of these world's major religions, all of these major religions do have the system of meditation with very little variations. For example, the Buddhist practice of Shamanth and Vipassana and uh, <coughs> the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, if you compare them, they are almost uh, same, except the uh, words, technical words used for particular things. Otherwise, the systems are mostly compatible with each other. So, any person who has a faith, then the system of meditation should also, within that 
tradition and it can be supplemented by other traditions for example many christian contemplative people or many sufi or muslim meditators use the vipassana method for their own um, journey of spirituality that's okay so any method is a adjust method which can be used in any tradition of faith but <coughs> one must be very clear in which faith he or she is belonging to and uh, the person must be honest and sincere to that faith the faiths the traditions of faiths cannot be mixed up or cannot substitute with each other so each tradition has its own system graduation path and method so that should be remain in that a buddhist system or method of meditation can be very well used by a christian but once christian faith according to christian canon should be kept intact and um, there should not be any variation or a hindu or muslim who so ever may be once on religious faith tradition should be kept any compromise with some other tradition these days many people think that my tradition has some weakness and this can be supplemented by other traditions as far as the methods and techniques are concerned of course you can do that but the basic philosophical thing <coughs> if someone is belonging to <coughs> believe in the creator then one must keep that faith honestly and sincerely and some other people are belonging to the faith group of not believing in the creator then that also must be kept honestly and sincerely in that belief of course a rational mind can inquire in zamin the validity of one's own faith but that does not mean <coughs> it is a, a kind of challenge to that faith but it should be a way of clarification one's own faith then after all if someone is uh, very clearly convinced one's own faith is not suitable to that person and some other faith would be more suitable for his or her spiritual journey then of course they can adopt some different faith but this should not be uh, termed as uh, these days people use conversion it is not a conversion it is a kind of a it is a kind of a <coughs> changing the medicine a patient is treated through some particular medicine 
the competent doctors recognize the disease and also give the best medicine according to their knowledge and that medicine is not working then doctors will would suggest a change of the drugs or the pills or the medicines and different medicine can be uh, experimented how it works the patient the same there is no any change the disease is also same but the medicine can be changed or substituted or supplemented so in this way even someone enters into a different faith one's previous faith must be respected and it should consider that i am not suitable for this tradition it is not the fault of the tradition but it is the limitation of the individual i am not suitable for buddhist teaching therefore i must follow the christian teaching or i am not suitable for christian teaching so therefore i should follow some other teaching so by this way the respect to all religion must be maintained that is a very important thing in the spiritual journey the religions are not comparable today in the western academic field they used to say comparative religious studies in the universities they used to have a department of comparative religious studies the religions are revealed by enlightened people and we are all unenlightened people and how unenlightened people can compare a thing which is revealed by enlightened people comparison means value judgment after comparing then you will say this religion is better than that religion or that religion is uh, uh, more rational and this is no, not more rational so on so forth so this kind of value judgment can never go to a, a spiritual path a religious tradition sorry i'm just scattered what i mean the meditator is in which tradition he or she is belonging to the meditation should also adjust or make compatible to one's own religious faith and it should not be uh, contradictory to one's uh, faith today many people actually do not belong into any religion for example there are many buddhists i can speak i am a buddhist so i can speak for the buddhist people many people they say i am buddhist because my parents were buddhist i am born in buddhist family it does not mean buddhism comes with the person by birth it is not a genetic uh, hereditary <laughs> the religion is a mindset to become a Bud- buddhist you must uh, have a refuge mindset to buddha dharma and sangha and for that you must know what is buddha and what is dharma and what is sangha without knowing buddha and dharma and sangha just taking refuge then if we say buddha people think buddha means the set statue of the shachamani buddha or the historical shachamani buddha 
they do not understand what means buddha awaken and the dharma they also do not understand so by repeating buddha shanam gachami dharma shanam gachami that will not create any mindset of refuge taking in you that shall have to be cultivate first understanding of the buddha dharma and sangha and secondly how you take refuge in them take refuge does not mean you give entire responsibility to to the triple gem to take refuge in dharma means to practice the dharma and to cultivate the dharma in your own mind let it grow in your mind and your mind become a nature of dharma so therefore to becoming a buddhist is not by birth or not by just affirmative words it need a cultivation of mind a great deal similarly the other religions also i think they have their own um <coughs> standards how one is entering into that faith these days uh, an expression is very common people usually use religious intolerance so this is absolutely contradictory expression someone has a religious mind he or she can never be intolerant as someone is intolerant that is the clearest evidence the person is not a religious person a religious mind and a intolerant mind cannot go together if religious mind grows into you then that must be able to subside or do away with the negative emotions including the intolerance and as long as you are intolerant your mind is not influenced or not cultivated by the religious mind <coughs> and similarly we use the word religious tolerance that is also disrespect to religion religions are to be respected not to be tolerated the to tolerate means it is not acceptable but i do not object is i tolerate it so this uh, set of words and languages as bits how the modern people are thinking about dharma about religion <clears throat> so we must be very careful about this <coughs> <coughs> these are just little different contest so now i am coming back to the um mindful meditation so intention should be at least not a negative one it is a positive it's okay even not a positive it should be neutral it must not be a negative one otherwise a negative emotion then you sit for meditation all the time you are spending to the meditation become a accumulation of negative action or engaging in negative action that is just waste in wastage of time then there after for any purpose to make the uh, meditation comfortable and successful we need a number of things particularly for the beginners 
by the way among our this group some of the participants are very senior meditators one of my friend told me that he attended more than 5 6 tens of vipassana camp and that means he is a very senior meditator so what i am talking is just repetition or uh, uh, not useful for that person as i mentioned yesterday since we are not acquainted with each other and the group is also mixed one so i am trying to mention you briefly the preliminary requirements for meditation it may be useful if there's any someone is very beginner otherwise uh, you might already know it so then the day it will be repetitive the place of meditation should also <coughs> for the beginners uh, free from some pollution not of noise traffic of vehicles or horns this kind of place will not be suitable for meditation and also climactic conditions also not very cold and not very warm or hot so the body can remain um, in a comfortable um, climate or the uh, environment and also free from constant disturbance opening the door shutting the door or coming someone in or so you need a comfortable uh, quiet place then also one should have a, a very unagitated body unagitated body means uh, your food intake is uh, important the human body by its nature one full food within 24 hours in thailand and myanmar the theravadan countries many of senior monks they take only one food within 24 hours around 11 o'clock in the morning in the day and that is sufficient for the 24 hours and they keep very uh, healthy body but we are being uh, heavy in the habit of taking so many times so i think the people take three times or four times so whatever you take three times or four times but that should be moderate not over eating as is eating the natural pathy people says between two meals there must be a four hours gap and the body needs four hours to digest the earlier food and once the earlier food is fully digest then the second food then they also say that the food must be taken in time and then the gap there should not be anything to eat but these days we are keeping eating some snacks or something all the time and that makes our body system uh disturbed and unusual a naturopathy doctor told me that if you are boiling rice or some grain 
and you have to put the thing in the pot and put water and boil it at once but you are boiling the water and putting the rice or the dal little bit little bit little bit then it will not properly cooked at any time so similarly we take the food and then give the body a gap of at least 4 hours to digest then otherwise uh, always keeping uh, eating and eating uh, that this do not allow the body function properly and then all kind of intoxication that will be a hindrance to meditation of course that will be harmful to your body if you need a healthy body you should have to avoid all kind of intoxication food or drink or any other thing there are so many different kind of intoxication in these days and sometimes we even breathe in intoxicated substances in the air in the polluted places so therefore we need to take care of our health at least for meditators um they have to take care <coughs> then for the body also need a sufficient sleep now the modern medical science people also says that before midnight one hour sleep and after midnight two hours sleep is equal for giving a restoration of the body if you sleep one hour that can give a comfort to your body cannot give if you sleep after 12 night in the midnight then the 2 hours sleep after midnight is uh, beneficial equal to the 1 hour sleep before midnight so that's why buddha says the middle of night is for sleeping if uh, the night is uh, 12 hours and uh, four hours before four hours after and between four hours that is proper time to sleep and it does not mean only four hours is sufficient that means you divide the night into three portions and the majority of the mid middle path is good for sleep if we uh, sleep at 8 o'clock and wake up at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock that means you are using the middle path of middle portion of the night is using for sleep and without a good sleep sufficient to your body then your body may not be uh, um, capable of concentration or attention or meditation so these are preliminary things to have a regulated lifestyle the modern lifestyle particularly in the urban areas people work till very late and they go to bed after the midnight or in the wee hours and thereafter they may sleep for 8 hours till next uh, 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock that will not give a sufficient uh, refreshment or rest to your body because it is too late so therefore early sleeping and uh, early get up is better to make the body capable of good meditation
I understand everybody knows about it, but in the process, when we talk about meditation according to the Buddhist canon, these preliminary things always comes there. Then finally, you sit down to meditate, then you should have a comfortable sitting arrangement, either on the floor or on the bed or on the chair. You could, if you could sit uh, cross leg, that is a good thing. Even you are not able to sit in cross leg because uh, many people in the modernity and particularly in the Western culture, people are not uh, in habit of sitting cross leg. And in that, you may sit on the chair. But one condition which is uh, necessary, almost indispensable, is to keep your backbone straight. Your backbone may not be uh, bent or crooked, so it should be kept straight. So that can be do in a, on a chair or on the sofa or on the floor sitting cross-legged. Then the proper sitting of cross leg is the Bajra Asana, the left feet inside and the right left in the outside and put together like this as the you can see the Buddha statues on this. That is most perfect uh, posture of sitting. And for that you need the um, um, the mattress little thicker backside and a little thinner front side. The back side is a little high and the front side is a little low. Not too much. If I put into the measurements, if your caution is six inch the back side and the front should be three and a half, little less than four. So by this proportion then you will have a good sitting posture. And the Bajra Asana grows like this. That could do, then you should do it. For young people, you may practice it. For older people, you may not be able to do it. So that should be voluntarily possible, as such like this without helping the hand. <laughs> so for young people you can do it and you will be able to do it. And otherwise the people do like this. <laughs> and that will not good. After a few minutes you will feel uh, uncomfortable. So you should leave it. Just. Uh, Whatever is comfortable, you can sit, you can sit like that. Then there for the hands, there are three different positions in the Buddhist too and in other traditions, some different. In the Buddhist, we have this, um, like this, the right up and the left down put together and the thumb put together. The putting together the thumb is uh, has some importance and then it put just below uh, your navel and this arms little bit away from the body. So by this way you will have a good position. And the second thing is like this. That is also possible. 
whatever is comfortable you may do it and the nobodhis people put like this they also put the finger and thumb together and the others then put it on the knees you will see most of the uh, hindu uh, yogics or the yoga poster they do mostly like this and uh, your eye should be looking down not very down but just you may see slightly the tip of nose not look into the tip of nose put like this and slightly you may see then head should be little bit inside and the cano says if you uh, put a thread from the nose it should straightly go down to the navel like that so this is the posture and uh, it can be in a chair just put down your feet down and in that case also the legs should not be crossed on the chair just put to, together and the feet should be put together not ahead and behind equally put together and touching the feet sole is touching the ground so that will give a stability to your body so this is body posture uh, how you do that then there after <coughs> coming down the mind coming down the mind for that also you need to come down the breath and for that purpose there are two different methods uh, one method is counting 21 times breathing out breathing in inhaling as healing one without any sound but you should feel look and also hear all your sensories should be put together to your exhaling and inhaling slowly exhaling you feel the touch of your breath to your nostrils and a kind of sound you can hear and you can see the outgoing of the wind and you also count this is one and then again this is two and it as healing and in healing counting as one set and you may count it till 21 21 is not the uh, uh, unbreakable limit by 21 we suppose that your body your breath and your mind would be settled and uh, even the 21 it doesn't settle your agitated mind or agitated body then you may repeat it another seven times or another seven times the purpose of counting the breath is uh, just to calm down the mind this is also one of the meditation method <coughs> anapanasati and in a vipassana tradition they do it for one day or for two days just counting concentrating on the breathing so in the uh, paramitayana tradition or nalanda tradition we don't spend one or two days only for the breathing we do it just in the beginning 
for some time, few minutes, and then thereafter, the <coughs> basic meditation begins. Counting the breath is uh, one method. The other method is uh, <coughs> the nine set of uh, clarifying the breath. In that case, by your right hand, block the right nozzle and slowly inhale without any sound, slowly and only inhale, complete in and then one finger block your left nose and as heel from the right nose to make complete empty of your body. So this one set, again you inhale from this one, as heel from the right, inhale from the left, as heel uh, from the right, three times. Then repeat it by reversing, inhale from the right nozzle, as hell from the left nozzle, three times. Then your hand put down wherever you have posture, and then inhale from both nozzle and as hell from both nozzle, three times. So this is a nine set of uh, settling or expelling the uh, uh, contaminated wind or contaminated breath which you have in the, your body. So this nine set can also be repeated twice or thrice as it may require. For tantric practice the nine set is uh, more important. For that some kind of visualization of uh, um, Winds also uh, recommended, but I do not talk it about here because this is uh, the Paramitayan tradition which uh, we are talking about. So these are the preliminary things before we begin to uh, start any kind of meditation. Now, coming to the um, basic uh, practice of uh, the four mindfulness. Simrit Upasthana. Close Contemplation is one expression used by some of translators. Or establishment of mindfulness is also used by another translators. So we are using the easiest one, the mindfulness. And I mentioned briefly the three kind of uh, body. So this uh, mindfulness meditation begins from the body. The Vipassana tradition also do that. But it is a little different from the Vipassana way. The division, the four division, the body, the feeling, the mind and the phenomenon. So these four objectives on which the uh, practice of mindfulness meditation is to be progressed. So in that um, sequence, the body comes the first. <coughs> Because uh, 
body is uh, gross a kind of tangible and uh, we have a idea of it quite clearly clearly what is body and how it this body functions we have awareness about it so therefore the meditation begins from the uh, body <coughs> the outer body has uh, so many its uh, um parts or its territory right from the head till the toe and it has two hands and two legs and the basic body which are composite of uh, bones and flesh and uh, skin and uh, uh, liquid things and blood and so many things in the buddhist canon the composition of body has uh, 32 different substances or different articles which make this body and the in usual time we are completely unaware of all this there is a, a very gross body sense but there's no particular awareness of body it doesn't come to us when you hurt any part of body that gives a sense of body little bit intense but after the pain goes away that body sense also goes away although we carry the body all the lifetime and it is like a baggage the consciousness has to carry and the consciousness has to attend to it and take care of it all the time but the awareness of the body is uh, almost uh, almost zero there's no total awareness body exists there so body is the nearest to our consciousness and body is always remain as a, what i should say as the house or as the uh, a bit of the our gross consciousness our mind and our soul subtle consciousness all consciousness is functioning within this body but the awareness is uh, very uh, very weak so the mindfulness of body after you are settling down through the counting of uh, breath or nine set of breath purification then you your full attention goes gives to the body the whole body to look to your body not you are as the body but you are a the your consciousness or your mind should be separate from the body and uh, the body should be a object to be looked upon and the mind become the spectator 
the onlooker and by this way then you slowly and gradually um, look into the body now one thing important is the body <coughs> and the feeling kaya smrit prasthana vedana smrit prasthana the awareness of the feeling and the awareness of the body are two different category <coughs> in the beginning when we try to uh, concentrate to the body our mind always goes to the feeling we are not able to differentiate the feeling and the body because body give aware to you through a feeling if there is a pain in your head then your attention goes to the head due to the feeling of the pain not due to the feeling of the existence of your head so mindfulness to the feeling is a different way that comes the second the first you separate the feeling and only concentrate on the body so that may not be very easy you only goes to the image of the body and you are not able to observe the body itself if you are not practicing the meditation verbally you may able to differentiate then but when actually you meditate it then you will find it is little uh, difficult or inconvenient to see the body without the combination or the help of the feeling so in the very beginning you may not separate the feeling but the 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 effort should go to aware the body without missing the feeling with the body <coughs> it might look a little awkward and a little difficult or nonsense but the basic composition of a person is uh, five aggregates and the five aggregates has uh, a separate characteristic and uh, existence so therefore in the meditation we have to see them separately and individually so therefore the body awareness mindfulness of the body comes as a, the first category so sit down look to your mind and the mind should direct it to to aware to aware is a worldly the world is quite easy but actually doing how you make aware of the body that unless you meditate on it you will not know you will not able to 
differentiate the awareness of the body, the awareness of the mind, the awareness of feeling. The phenomenon may be little easy to differentiate, but the mind, body and feeling all comes in a mixture. So, the first effort should be, now it has so many uh, stages, so many gradation that need, if you are interested only the knowledge of theory, then that is easy. If you are on, uh, really seriously uh, have intention to uh, meditate it, then you need to put a lot of effort to begin with. Mind always goes after many things and so many thoughts and so many images comes into the mind all the time. To begin with mindfulness of the body, you should try to consolidate all of your mind, making it away from chattering of thought and make a silent to remove all kind of chattering of thought and only to aware the whole block of your body, the size, whatever you have size, which includes all part of your body or you are sitting in a cross leg, or you are sitting on a chair, whatever it may be, your mind can take the body as a whole, and you are aware all part of your body, the mind has the, the awareness, the realization, awareness or realization, what it may be. It is not a feeling of the body. It is not a look in the body from outside, like look into a picture. But the mind is clearly aware of the existence of body. So there is no word which I can use for clear demonstration, but you can understand it from the practice and from your own meditation. <coughs> In the beginning, one day, two day, three day, may not be able to make any uh, total awareness of the body, but you should keep your effort the mind goes scattered and just put them back and try to aware the whole structure of body. It may not be very detailed, but grossly and hip of something which is uh, the body which is owned by the consciousness, the mind, the mind is uh, not, uh, not looking the body as something outside object, but something which holds the mind, which gives the reside, in which the mind is residing and with resi that residence make an awareness. 
for example we are sitting in this room this room is not me but i have an awareness of the shape of the color of the roof of the floor and in which not by using the words but aware yes i am aware of this whole existence so this kind of awareness of the body need to be uh, cultivated in our mindset <coughs> after some days of practice you have a, a gross awareness of the whole body then the second stage is to go into details you try to make aware of your head if you start from the head if you have a bald head you make aware of this uh if you have a rich here black or white or whatever it may be aware of all this almost each um separate each uh thread of the uh, here part by part to make aware of this and then to come to the scalp come to the brain and come to the inside materials slowly 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 and comes down without losing the clear awareness of the upside your awareness goes comes down little bit little bit little bit and uh, up to the your throat and you are able to aware clearly up to your throat then keep concentration for some time on that stage and then this comes down little by little little by little and the whole up to your feet and toe so the practice of aware in the body goes like that it may take years together to have the complete awareness when you have the gross awareness of the body <coughs> then you go for the detail the each particular substance such as blood such as hormones and such as the flesh and all these substances go to detail and then furthermore all these gross things are composite of small particles whatever the gross things tangible things appear before us these are composition of countless small particles <coughs> small uh particles which are belonging to different basic elements the atoms and uh, smaller than the atoms so in the buddhist philosophy there are great debate what is the smallest atom and how to define the smallest atom does the smallest atom has a uh, uh, part or it is partless 
so there's a different different discussion it goes with the physicists and other things but the body is composed of so many small particles coming from four different elements and usually the paramita abhi dharma says whatever is gross that is composed of eight different small particles the four basic elements of uh, earth fire wind um, and uh, water the liquid and then the shape um, the smell the taste and uh, the texture so only the sound is uh, left out in the tantrayana sound is also included so then it is nine so this comes together and each particle is not touching with the other particle the small particles has a independent space and also have space in between so this how the whole elements are work together cooperatively so now the modern science also sees this reality and uh, therefore the mindfulness of body goes to the the smallest particles in the part of body so that is the most difficult part of practicing the awareness of the body because uh, the body is a gross thing but that gross thing is not inherently or as a whole a solid one thing it is a combination of a numerous different parts and the different parts are also composed of smaller and smaller and smaller and smallest particles comes together and each smallest particles has a, a movement and a, a changing and a, a dynamism and a, a energy all these are working so by this way when we see the subtlest things in a gross thing then the principle of impermanence and also the principle of interdependence can be understood directly can be understood in a uh, in a tangible way so therefore now as i mentioned before the awareness word is combination of the uh, memory and uh, uh, the uh, recognition smrt and sampragyana the memory always give the retention of the what have passed in the past moment and what has passed in the past moment is uh, to be carried by the memory and that memory makes a continuum 
of the thing in this case of the body the particles of the past body which is no no existence now but it was there and it was converted into the present one and the present one is going to the future one and this transition is always uh, continue continuously happening there and that shall have to be aware by the memory and by memory it is aware then the sampragyana the shijin the real awareness is realizing it or seeing it as it is it is moves so there is a combination of remembering and a combination of the recognition by the consciousness of that changing decay arising and decay and arising this whole moment is being able to see directly so that is the mindfulness then there's nothing is happened nothing happens in the part of body which is unaware of the consciousness and it makes sense <laughs> difficult <laughs> Huh? <clears throat> all the momentum all the transitoriness all the decay arising continuum going to the future these are always taken in the body and the consciousness is unaware of this dynamism and can we make the consciousness always aware of this dynamism which is taking all the time in our body not make any sense <laughs> just to have a mindfulness that i have a body i must protect it from hurting or damaging this kind of awareness everybody has it's not difficult there's no need to uh, practice awareness of the body actually we have two misconceptions the biggest misconception is a misconception of existence of inherent independent self the self is not interdependently constructed but there's independent self in english we are use the word ego i don't know the ego conveys the full meaning but we have misconception of a inherent independent existence unchangeable existence of self that is the ignorance the root cause of all our misery and uh, karma and klesha and all kind of things the second misconception is uh, the misconception of unchangeable the permanence of the body a permanence of the whole thing we roughly know the life is impermanent and one day the death will come but all the time the death is not coming just now it's coming tomorrow or day after tomorrow or after many years so tunga bhai said even the patient 
who is uh, very near to death also think that I am not going to die now. I may die tomorrow or this afternoon, but I am not going to die now. So this kind of postponement. And that is that misconception comes from the unawareness of the ever changing nature of body, consciousness and mind altogether. So the awareness of body, the mindfulness of body means to keep account of its changing, arising, decay, arising, decay, changing and seeing this changing unmistakably, clearly. So that is mindfulness of the body. So if that kind of mindfulness of body is able to cultivate in our mind, then the misconception of uh, independent self and uh, the misconception of permanence of the self can be reduced and finally can be reduced and finally eradicated. So that is the purpose of meditation on the mindfulness of the body. For stress management, you need not go to that extent. <laughs> you just make aware of your the gross body and uh, take care of that. That will be sufficient. <coughs> so the sequence is first the gross body and then second the all part of the body from head to feet, from feet to head, anulong vilong, that means come down and go up by this way several times and then by that way if you are able to achieve the awareness of the body, awareness of body achieve means when you are giving attention, you are aware and when you are not giving attention, you are not aware and that is not the achievement of full awareness. Full awareness means that awareness remains all the time. Of course, when you sleep, that is different. At that time, the mindset is uh, something differently operating or you are unconscious, that is also different. Otherwise, as long as you remain conscious, you are always aware of the whole body that is the final stage of body awareness. The Keno says, the Buddha never step on some insect or living creature. Uh, but the Buddha never sleep. Uh, slippery, he might go on the slippery ways, but he never sleep. And why? The reason is he is aware of all these things, always aware. So that due to that awareness, he do not uh, step on wrong side or uneven side or put on some insect. So that is the a, a kind of uh, what I to say <coughs> a kind of um, the um, standardization of how when the awareness reaches at the optimum at the net maximum le maximum level or is the I don't know what should say English. Paramita, the in Sanskrit paramita, yes, or uh, ultimate perfection or something like that. Having said that, now what are the obstacles and hindrances in the process of 
meditation. In this meditation of uh, mindfulness of body, the body is the object and the mind is the thing which gives attention. And the mind gives attention to the body. Uh, there are two basic obstacles. The two basic obstacles, the first is uh, scatteredness. In Sanskrit we call it Uddhat, Gupa. That means you are giving attention to the body and nothing else. Only body is uh, the object of the mind, whole of your mind. But your mind goes away and uh, having so many different images or different thoughts come which disturbs the attention. That is the first uh, hindrance. And the second hindrance is uh, sinking. Le, uh, in Sanskrit we call Le, uh, Tibetan Chihuahua, to, uh, to sink. When you are trying to give full attention, the first is scatteredness. And this scatteredness has to be recognized again by the mindfulness. And when you have some different kind of thought other than the body, then you have to take back the full attention to the body and uh, avoid or make clear the other thought. So this is not very difficult. It is quite easy. The difficulty is due to weakness of the uh, mindfulness you may not see when your mind gets scattered get away from the main object sometimes after few minutes or after half an hour you may realize because it is so subtle in the beginning forget the object and thinking someone else at gross level you may recognize it easily but when you progress into your meditation and you have capacity to more attentiveness then the scatteredness become more subtle and difficult to recognize so you have to watch the one thing you are to watch is your body and a small part of your mindfulness also need to watch the mind itself. Does the mind itself is going away from the body or it is always concentrated on the body? So as and when it is uh, um, scattered and uh, go out of the main objective then immediately recognize it and bring back mind to the object of concentration that's the body <coughs> and uh, this watchfulness and do the remedy to put him back Sometimes the hindrance become very forceful and you are not able to put back the mind to the object of concentration. Then you should break, go out or just wash your face and eye or drink some water or something like that and then come back to sit. 
if that's not so that powerful you may do the remedy put him back the concentration to your body then your meditation progress quite advanced then the another hindrance you are not losing the object but the clarity and uh, the forcefulness of the mind of the consciousness is uh, reduced and losing then you are attentive on the body but the force is force of mind is uh, very low it is not uh, grasping the body very actively and forcefully it is just like uh, dozing off and if it remains there then it may come down come down come down and at one stage it become unaware of everything unaware of the body unaware of the mind and unaware of the thinkingness and it may sometimes mistake a good meditation i am settled in the meditation so that and also you have to raise the mind you have to re enforce or recharge the force of mind and the uh, concentration not only concentrative that it it is very forceful and uh, entirely attentiveness alertness that need to be restored so this is uh, the way to remove the uh, hindrances in the process of the meditation then as i mentioned be- before meditation has two categories one is uh, contemplative or analytical meditation and the other is uh, uh, concentrative meditation one pointedness so in this meditation of awareness of body should also have both part together in the beginning your meditation is uh, analytical analytical means you are seeing the detailed portion or the gross portion of the body to create an aware of this and in that in that stage the process of meditation is uh, a contemplative and going from one place to another place or seeing one particular thing then another particular thing the head or the eye the nose the ears this are goes to when once you get uh, clarity of all these to your awareness then you give up the analytical part and then just settle down mind on that what you have achieved the clarity and then you concentrate on that or attentive to that and then make it for few minutes or 10 15 minutes without the analyzing or contemplating as but settle just attentively one pointednessly to that so these two must go together because in the later stage when you are mastered in the uh, meditation the portion of shamat and the portion of vipassana the concentrativeness and the analytical both of these have to be achieved absence of one the other is useless without hatong the shine has no many without shine 
the last one cannot be achieved. So, stability of mind is for the purpose of empowering it, analyzing without losing the concentration. At this moment, our mind is doing only one thing. If you are concentrated, you cannot analyze. If you are analyzing, you cannot concentrate. So, to make both of them workable through your one mind is to achieve the shamat and the vipassana both together. Vipassana means after achievement of shamat, then the shamat itself become an instrument of analytical meditation and through which the vipassana, the lhathung, can be arising. So therefore, in the beginning also, more portion is to be spent in an integral and then in the last, some portion of the time shall have to be spent on um, concentrative meditation. This is the way. So, we have talked about uh, the whole growth of body and then whole growth of body is uh, become more clearly aware then each part of body shall have to be practiced and by doing so when you are able to aware of the entirety of the, your gross body at once when you go to the meditate you are able to aware the entirety of the, your gross body then the um, practice of meditation should uh, um, upgraded to see the inner body as I mentioned before the inner body means the um, subtle organs the organs means the body on which the sensory minds are functioning the organ of eye it is at one place the organ of ear is also reside in a one place and similarly the taste the smell but the organ of the body the touch that is uh, reside the entirety of the body and every portion of body which uh, uh, which is capable of feeling has the organ for uh, for touching so therefore this kind of uh, inner organs which are of course cannot be seen by eye or tangible but it is a kind of uh, uh, energy or kind of uh, wave the the principle of energy and the principle of wave are not uh, uh, discovered only by the modern science in the ancient science all these are in a different language we talk about so so all these things we have to be aware then thereafter the subtleness of the atoms and particles that we have to be uh, concentrated so the body is so vast and its details are enormous and its functionings are also enormous so to make awareness of the whole body you may take years together to meditate it and it is not so easy 
it appears to be so easy it's just me just my body is something small and um, i can make my shirt or my pant according to my body size and i know my body size also this is not the real awareness of the body so at this moment we are completely unaware of the major part of our gross body and the entirety of the inner body we do not have any awareness about inner body and we do not have any awareness of the very small particles belonging to various elements and coming together and which are working in a space through some kind of energy and wave we are completely unaware of this so through mindful meditation of body can arise can cultivate in your mind slowly and gradually when you become aware of the gross things then as much as awareness of gross things arise in your consciousness in your mind then it can go further subtle things further smaller things further deeper things slowly and gradually and finally you will see how this body is a something something very uh, uh, a kind of miracle millions of millions of so tiny particles are putting together living in a shape changing all the time all the dynamism and all this are going on if you see that that would be give entirely different insight of the body and as well as of the soul uh, of the self then one's own body awareness is achieved some extent then it can be um replicated to other bodies as well different person's body or different uh kind of living creatures they are so many different kind of body and different kind of inner body so all these things can gradually and slowly can understand and can uh, put awareness on all this all this body so this is a very vast subject then we become aware the mindfulness is achieved on about our body then another thing which is important insight and also a sinister insight for spiritual journey is it will make aware you the relationship with the nature the relationship with the universe the relationship with other sentient beings other human beings and other sentient beings and the 
perception of relationship will entirely transformed and changed because at this moment we have uh, the illusion of i the ego by that way we are not able to see the reality of the interdependence and the relationship and all the relationships at this moment are centered on selfish motivation i relate to this because i need this this is for my benefit even the human relationship between husband wife parent and children if you go into the deeper thing all these are not for the sake of other or on the basis of compassion all these are for self satisfaction my son therefore i love the my is first and then love comes later on if it is not my son then i will not have that kind of it is not because of that beautiful child it is because this beautiful child is created by me it is belongs to me so that kind of relationship is not a real relationship then it always change and then little behavior can also change the relationship or destroy the relationship so gross human relationship and the subtleness of the interdependent nature of all phenomena all of these are same on the principal level and but we have divided them into many different portions due to our ignorance the relationship krishnamurti used to say the relationship is a mirror in which you can see yourself and nobody understand what he is talking about but it has a, a real deep many and then also he always says you are the world if you wish to change the world you have to change yourself and without changing yourself you remain as the changer and the world is to be changed then you will never achieve that so all these things has a, a very similar connotation what the buddha have said what the buddhist people are the buddhist philosophy are talking about understanding of the nature of the body and not understanding nature of the body intellectually or academically but from the experiential level experiential level you become aware of the nature the parts the composition the changing the dynamism the function if you become aware of that body then you will able to perceive not conceive perceive and realize the subtle and indispensable relatedness or relationship with every small things outside inside a small flower flowering hundreds kilometers away from your body or small insect flying butterfly somewhere 
thousand kilometers away. In this gross level, there's no connectivity, there's no relationship, and nothing to do with each other, not knowing each other. But we really aware, become aware of the body, then you will see the relatedness and the interdependency and also the relationship with each other, with nature, with the sentient beings. Not only oneself and the other sentient beings, but the entirety of sentient beings, the entire world, how does it exist? Because the visible world is largely a, a group of bodies. The society we call about society, even the social scientists would say a crowd is not a society. Society means something, relationship. But in their perception, the relationship is uh, something artificial and a human creature. But we are able to aware the real position or real existence of one's own body, of course, which is inseparable from the consciousness, yet it has a, a different entity, different identity, the body and mind. And the mind become aware of that entity, that body, which is uh, for the lifetime inseparably bound or related, tied with one's consciousness is uh, revealed its own nature, its own uh, composition or its own parts and its own dynamism, then you become aware of the uh, real relationship and uh, how the self is do exist interdependently and uh, uh, designated by mind alone and there's nothing uh, inherently independently unchangeably existence of self so that is the finality or that's the curse of the uh, purpose of meditating on the body awareness or body consciousness. <laughs> I think uh, many people must have uh, some questions and uh, I was uh, forgot to tell yesterday we planned this uh, uh, discussion for four days today is second day and uh, tomorrow third day and the fourth day I will not speak anything the fourth day is uh, uh, dedicated for question answer so anyone has a question each day, please note down in your notebook or in your mind, if you are <laughs> a good memory. Then the last day, the whole day will uh, spend on um, question answer, all your questions. I don't know, I have a answer to every question, but whatever. Uh, your questions, I will try to uh, respond them. And one thing yesterday I forgot to uh, tell you was that 
this uh, uh, discussion the for this discussion is only an academic talk not a transmission of religious teaching so you need not post it or you need not uh, uh, make a teacher or disciple relationship someone want it or someone already have it then it is okay otherwise we are all so you can criticize me or you can <laughs> reject my talks uh, uh, at your free will this is an, just an uh, academic class classroom talk sort of thing so this is just a um, talk not a teaching so this also should be clear everybody's mind so today the quota of today's time is uh, completed i stop here and tomorrow 9:30 we will meet together thank you